This video is going to show you how to do a one way within subjects and over or one way repeated measures and over. In as much as we're going to have a variable that's been repeatedly tested under three different conditions, we want to see the influence of those conditions on our dependent variable. However, we're not going to do this in your traditional ANOVA. This is because basically a traditional ANOVA is actually not that well suited to a lot of psychological data. And also we've got to worry about problems, for example, sphericity of our data. So whether differences and variances between conditions are relatively even. The method that we're going to use now is actually probably a better method to use. This method uses a generalized linear model. So in order to run this, we need some packages and we need our read Excel package to read in the Excel data set. Estimated marginal means will give us our estimated marginal means if you want to do any post hoc contrasts. SJ stats um, gives us um, a partial S squared or Cohen's F effect size if you want it. The key package really is LME4 and this will allow us to do our generalized linear model. And also we'd want this LMER test package. Um, this basically will give more comprehensive output than the LME4 package, it gives us p-values and so on. And I'll also show you this package here, the MUMIN package, um, which will allow us to get an R squared for our model as well. So there's a few different effect sizes that we can produce. As usual, if you've already installed these, you have to install them again, but they will need to come out of the library. And I'm going to turn off scientific notation as well, so we get our exact p-values. So the data we're going to read we're going to call our data frame is going to be called alcohol prime and this is its location and we'll just have a look at that as ever you're going to have to change this bit to match your location and then i'm going to attach it as well so we're always running off that data so here's our data set and we've got sub drink and words so sub is simply our participants that you can see got 31 participants but they appear again and again and um, that's because they're repeatedly measured so this basically means that the drink they consume is done on a repeated measures basis so if you see subject one comes in and has drink one subject one has drink two subject one has drink three so everybody completes three different drink conditions and basically condition one is they consume alcohol condition two is they have a placebo drink that smells and tastes like alcohol but doesn't contain alcohol at all and condition three is a controlled drink so just a glass of water that they don't think contains alcohol at all and our dependent variable is words and this is the number of words our participants produce in a phenomic fluency task where they have to say as many words as they can that begin with a certain letter in one minute and they have to do that for three different letters. So what we're interested in is whether the drink influences the amount of words they can produce. So we'd hypothesize that following an alcoholic drink they produce less words because this interferes with executive functioning. What we're going to do from our alcohol prime data frame we're going to extract the element drink and we're going to tell R it's a factor. So the extracted element has three levels C brackets one two three and the labels for these are C bracket alcohol placebo control. So we run this section here and now R simply knows that we have a factor and what it means. And we can check this by summary alcohol prime. Let's get a quick summary. And there you go. We see we've got sub and then drink. And because it's a factor, it's just telling us there's 31 measurements in each of our conditions. If we want to run our model, we're going to call our linear model drink f drink effect is the effect that drink is going to have and the dependent variable is words and we have the tilde symbol and then our iv is as factor and drink so it's a factor and it's called drink now what makes this within subjects is this bit here so we put one line sub sub merely being the name of how we identify our participants so what we're doing here is we're adding a random effect for sub. If we didn't do this, we'd violate the regression. 
because the regression's assumption is independence of observations. So each line of data we'd assume to be independent of each other. However, because it's repeated measures, they're not independent because they can't be independent when it's the same person doing something three times. So we add this random effect for subject. So this essentially controls for that. So we run that model and nothing happens, but then we just ask for the ANOVA output for drink effect. So you want to show this model as an ANOVA. And this is just your standard ANOVA output. So the influence of our independent variable of drink, degrees of freedom, 260, our F statistic, 10.185, and our P value. And as you can see, we've got a highly significant effect there. And we could just write this up. We could just say there's a significant effect of drink on words produced and then we re report our f along with the degrees of freedom give the f statistic and give the p-value of course we can also produce an effect size so eta squared drink effect and then we've written partial as true so this is going to give us a partial eta squared so there's the partial eta squared there if we wanted we could use the R squared G L M M, which we took from the M U min package. So we run that. This gives us two R squareds here. That's the R squared for the effect of the IV. This is the R squared for the effect of the IV and the random effect as well. Generally speaking, now you'd be reporting the eta squared more likely than not. So we've got a significant effect, and we've written that up along with our effect size as well. But we also, we don't know what conditions significantly differ from each other. So how do we do that? We can use our estimated marginal means command, which we take our drink effect. And then we write list pairwise drink. This is saying we want pairwise comparisons between the different drinks. We can choose an adjustments if you want. So for example, here's a Bonferroni, or we could say Tukey. But let's just use a Bonferroni correction. So we run that. And this gives us an output. So this is the estimated marginal mean for each condition, standard error, confidence intervals. But this is actually where we do the comparisons between conditions. So the contrast between condition one and condition two, says the contrast between alcohol and control, significantly different. And as you can see, condition one has fewer words produced on average than condition two. The comparison is highly significant again. And again, fewer words in condition one compared to condition three and condition two so placebo compared to control no significant difference at all and we could just write those up accordingly so we can just state that part, following alcohol participants produce fewer words than following placebo giving our p-value and control giving our p-value placebo control did not differ and giving the p-value for that as well as i said earlier if you're using your traditional anover method you would also want to look at muckley's test of sphericity However, that's not an issue with this, but what is important now, we can check the distribution of our residuals as well. And we want to have a normal distribution of our residuals. To look at that, we could do a QQ plot. So that's for a QQ norm for the residuals from our drink effect model. So we run that, and that gives us a QQ plot. And in a QQ plot, we want that to be pretty much a diagonal line it's not too bad there's always a bit of a tail on qq plots but that's relatively straight line 